In the last lesson, we looked at functionalism as a sociological theory. So we talked about a number of different aspects of functionalism. Well, in this lesson, we're going to look at the next sociological theory, that being specifically related to Marxism. Now, we're not going to do a full, in-depth, you know, sociological exegesis of the um, theories within Marxism, because that would take a very long time and that would be a very um, complicated task. People spend university degrees studying uh, Marxism. But we're going to take an overview of the things you really need to know for sociology, the basics that you need to know for sociology relating to Marxism. And obviously, just like with functionalism, we're going to come back to Marxism when we actually apply these theories to certain sociological um, factors. So things like crime and deviance, education and, you know, uh, religion, etc, etc. So let's begin by talking about what Marxism is. So Marxism, as the name suggests, is linked with the sociological works and theories of Karl Marx. So we're talking about Marxism from a sociological aspect, from a sociological lens of analysis, because there are other ways in which we can look at Marxist theory. Marx wasn't just a sociologist, he was also an economist and a philosopher, okay, who proposed a number of critiques of capitalism from the perspectives of sociology, economics, and philosophy. So one of the things that he did, he did okay, was he didn't just critique capitalism the concept of capitalism from an economic perspective he did that as well but he also talked about it from other perspectives so he talked about the influence from a philosophical perspective okay from a sociological perspective and that's where we get a number of marxist theories so from an economic perspective he talks a lot and references a lot about the labor theory of value okay something we'll bring touch on in a minute from a philosophical perspective, he talks about human nature and the way in which human nature um, contributes to the alienation of a worker from their from their work, from the production of their work, and the, and the, how capitalism perpetuates and um, you know exacerbates that process. And from a sociological perspective, he talks about the influence that capitalism has on society and ideology generally. He believed that we view, um, we view everything, we view the world from a capitalist lens, through a capitalist lens of analysis, and that can um, actually, um, you know, have a detrimental impact on our development and the society as a whole. So let's talk about the sociology specifically. So. Marx believed that the economic system, the economic system being capitalism, capital, capitalism, by the way, capitalism being quite a new concept in, in, in Marx's time. Okay, Marx was writing around the time of David Ricardo and Adam Smith and these new thinkers and these new capitalist works um, that were tr that were being developed and the basically the introduction of economics as a social science or as even a, a hard science. So we have here um, the economic system capitalism influencing non-economic institutions. So he believed that capitalism, we can't just view capitalism from its economic um, position. We can't just view it as an economic system and only in isolation as an economic system. We also have to look at the impact that it has on non-economic institutions. So therefore, from that perspective, economics and the economy in general, okay, influences quite heavily sociology and society. Something that shouldn't be too controversial of a of a of an understanding. And if we want to understand sociology better, we have to develop our understanding of economics and examine the capitalist framework we live in. One of the key features of Marxian theory is the theory of historical materialism or dialectical materialism. Now, this is a theory of history. This is a theory of how history develops, also known as a you know historiographical, a historiographical theory. Sorry. And this was a view of human society based on material conditions, material, uh, you know, the, the material technological conditions that we live in. OK. And according to Marx and Engels, Friedrich Engels, who worked with Marx and published a lot of his works. OK. Human society developed through these material conditions. 
And the reason why we talk about dialectical and dialectics specifically, this is a Hegelian um, understanding. Okay, this is a Hegelian word. So this is a, an influence from Hegel, if we can uh, spell. Now, Hegel, you don't need to know about for sociology, was a, a philosopher from around the time. Uh, Marx learned a lot and was influenced quite heavily by not just Hegel, but also the uh, English Enlightenment um, philosophy as well. But what we mean by dialectical and dialectics is we're talking about sort of two opposing forces that are sort of in um, conflict with each other. And Marx viewed history as a development of the dialectical relationships between um, different people. So you can talk about the different modes of history, the modes of analysis, one of them being the distinction between, in a feudal system, between the lord and the serf, and the kind of dialectical relationship that existed in that, in that framework, because these were two opposing forces that were often in con conflict with each other. OK, you also could talk about the slave and the slave owner. And Marx believed that this kind of dialectical analysis can just be continued and brought to a, um, you know, into the modern era by talking about dialectics in capitalist. In capitalism, specifically relating to, you know, the owner class, the boss and the working class, the workers. OK, or as the or as we will um, work out in a minute, the sort of bourgeois and the proletarian. Um, different class system that exists. Now, when we're talking about class conflict, Marx, according to Marx, believed that class conflict was a central thesis to sociological theory. In a capitalist society, workers are employed to produce goods and services. Okay, he didn't actually reference services that very uh, very much. We're talking mainly about goods in, a, in Marxism. So workers are employed to produce goods and services, which are then sold by your boss uh, for profit. Okay, and you get a pro uh, you get a percentage of your profit, and your boss takes the rest. Now this relates to the labor theory of value. So what Marx believed in the labor theory of value. So we write this down here, the labor, labor theory of value. What Marx believed, okay, and what Marx argued was that the value of commodities, so when we're purchasing commodities, the, the price and the value that is placed on commodities is based around the value of the labor, the amount of labor that was put into um, that commodity. So, for example, we can't talk about the value of a chair without talking about the work put in to build the chair. And Marx believed that um, value was derived from labour um, plus uh, plus natural resources. Oopsie daisy. So Marx believed that if we take some natural resources and we uh, infuse the natural resources with a certain amount of labor, then the value of the commodity um, comes out as a result. And so what we're doing in this example, if your boss, if the owner class, if the bourgeois owner class is taking a percentage of your profits, okay, and not putting any labor in himself, then in this regard, what you are being, what is happening is you are alienating the worker from their from their labor so that is a theory of alienation and the view that um, you know that this relates more specifically to the human condition under Marxism and specifically relating to institutions of sociology institutions like family religion and education are what Marx called a superstructure okay the superstructure of society and within this superstructure capitalism Capitalism influences this superstructure. So capital influences this superstructure. Now it ought to be noted, before we move on to just looking at the last bit when we talk about class conflict, that Marx, Marx's understanding of, of capitalism wasn't necessarily one of capitalism being a very, like, you know, part of potentially immoral or, or evil um, economic system. 
Marx sort of viewed capitalism from a historical materialist perspective. So he talked about it as just a a mode that is going to take us to a closer um, a closer goal. So it's just just like feudalism and just like um, the mercantile capitalism. We have a it's just a an ebb and flow that eventually will take us to the eventual um, you know socialism or communism or higher socialism and, and, and lower socialism the kind of development of um, you know first stage and second stage socialism and what socialism um, means at the most basic most fundamental level is that the means of production. So the ways in which you produce things, so that the the capital, uh, the resources, and the labour, okay, are owned by the workers. They are commonly owned by everybody. That's all it means. The common ownership of the means of production. Now, obviously, socialism has then been then developed further and further by later Marxian theorists, people like Rosa Luxemburg, uh, Vladimir Lenin, um, um, Mao Zedong, etc., etc., etc. So. To finish off, we mentioned it before, we have the bourgeois and the proletariat. So the proletariat being the working class, bourgeois being the sort of ruler or owning class. And just like in a dialectical materialist perspective, the working class and the owner class are sort of two sides of of um, this conflict and they are always in conflict with each other. Okay, They both have um, diametrically opposing um goals and ambitions and aims and it's important to balance those out and that's what we believe uh, when it talks about a Marxist perspective. Now this wasn't a very detailed in-depth analysis of, of Marxian theory. We're going to talk about Marxism um, specifically in Marxian theory as we go along through A-level sociology. Um, if you want to go deeper into Marxism and look at Marxism in a uh, more um, more analytical perspective we have a couple of lessons on the learning academy from a very long time ago when we talked about uh, marxism we haven't got that many and we want to uh, improve it and include some more um but we will be you know producing some more lessons later in the future